Prior to Vue 3, developers needed to create large, complex JavaScript objects which contained all the state, methods, watchers, and computed properties. You can still use this object in Vue, but it takes away from some of the nice advantages the Composition API has to offer. First, using the Composition API allows you to group code by concern. This means we don't need to look throughout the whole component when we're only worried about a specific functionality. Next, we can reuse stateful logic without having to create complex mixins or extend other components. This makes it possible to create libraries like ViewUse, which comes with many composable functions to make your life easier. In this video, we'll look at the seven most common composition functions. We'll also create our own composable function to maximize reusability throughout our code base. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Now, let's get started. You'll notice when using the Composition API, we create a single setup function instead of different property sections. This is where we call the View Composition API or our own composable functions. Let's start by looking at two functions that are easily the most commonly used, ref and reactive. These functions are simply used to store a value. When it comes to deciding which to use, it's common to store JavaScript primitive types like numbers, strings, and booleans in refs, while other types like maps and objects in reactive. You'll notice a ref will return an object which has a value property. We need to pass primitive types to ref since Vue needs some way to track changes. Vue uses this property to detect changes and without it, Vue wouldn't be able to use its powerful reactivity system. When using the reactive function, it will simply return the object you passed in and use those objects pointers to detect reactivity. To access them in the template, we'll need to return these values from the setup function. For example, we can create a counter that will increment these values. Whenever a user clicks the button, it will simply add one. You'll also notice in the template, we won't need to use dot value when accessing refs. Vue will automatically deconstruct this value for us in the template. Sometimes when dealing with reactive objects, we want to convert them from objects to refs. You can't simply do this with JavaScript deconstruction since you'll lose reactivity. Instead, we can use the toRefs function and use that to deconstruct the object into refs. It's common to use this function on props since they come as reactive objects. This way, you can break them up into refs and use them where they're needed. Next, we have the computed function. It accepts a getter function and returns an immutable object with a dot value property that is equal to return value from the getter. This is really useful when you need to compute values from other dependencies. In our counter, we could use this to multiply the count by two and display it to the user. The computed function automatically recognizes when its dependencies change and then reruns the function to recompute it. Similar to computed, we have watch effect. This function runs the callback immediately and then reruns it whenever any of its dependencies changes. If we wanted to do something every time the count changed, like print a value to console, we can do it with the watch effect. Like before, it automatically recognizes when dependencies change. An alternative to watch effect is the watch function. It allows us to only run a function when certain values change. This is the exact equivalent to the options API. It watches a specific data source and applies side effects in a separate callback function. It is also lazy by default, meaning the callback is only called when the watch source has changed. Compared to watch effect, watch performs the side effect lazily. It's more specific about what state should trigger the watcher to rerun and the callback function gains access to the current and previously watched state. A watcher data source can also either be a getter function that returns a value or directly a ref. It also provides support for an array of refs. Lastly, we have lifecycle hooks. There are many functions you can use like un unmounted, on update, and on air capture. These functions accept a callback that will be executed when the hook is called by the component. This can be useful for performing specific tasks. We can use the onMounted lifecycle hook to initialize values or fetch information from an external API. 
To do this, we can create an async function and wait for our data to be returned. We can then assign these values to a ref, and we could also update a loading ref to indicate if the fetch request is still processing. If you're new to front-end development, it's important to know what a composable function is. This concept is used in other frameworks like React and allows you to write reusable state logic by simply calling a function. It's a convention to prefix these functions with the word use because they are using a composable function. This makes it easy to identify which are composable functions since they have a special rule. That is, you should only call them at the root level of your setup function. They don't work inside regular JavaScript functions, nested functions, loops, or inside any of the primitive functions we talked about. The one exception to this is you can call other composable functions inside one another, since we know the composable function we are using will be called at the root level of the setup function. I hope you learned about the Vue 3 Composition API functions and the new way for building reusable state logic. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other tutorials. I also have a growing community over on Discord if you have any questions. Hope to see you in the next one.